Hello and welcome to another edition of An English Guy Watching Wrestling. I'm the English Guy, I'm Nick. Thank you so much for clicking on another video, really appreciate it. And this one we're going to be covering the 18th of June 2021 edition of AEW Dynamite. That being said, drop right into it. The opening matchup was a very first time ever matchup in AEW history. It was a cage fight. A mixed martial arts cage fight, that is, between Jake Hager and Wardo. Now, <clears throat> Jake Hager is no stranger to mixed martial arts cage fights. He's a Bellator fighter, and he's an undefeated Bellator fighter. He's won three fights and had no losses or no draws in his career. So he had the advantage experience-wise in this kind of environment in this one. And when it, I've seen these matches before, this kind of environment in terms of a wrestling show. And they're always unique. And I've got to give credit where it's due. This was quite entertaining. Now, I've seen quite a lot of mixed martial arts fights in the past. Now, <clears throat> I used to watch it a lot. I don't watch it much anymore, to be honest with you. But that being said, it was as a professional wrestling version of it, so to speak. So it was as it was a bit of a different kind of an, an, a wave all put, all put together. <clears throat> that being said, it was actually a very well put together bout, shall we say. And I enjoyed it because obviously the only way to win this match I will say was by knockout TK or TKO or referee stoppage. And that is how <clears throat> JK won the match by referee stoppage with his um triangle not triangle choke. Um he has a chokehold that he does standing up. Um, I think I don't even know what it's called. Not too sure what it's called. Anyway, but basically, a unique chokehold up top. And he's won, I think, more than one of his fights like that in mid March. So I think he's won two of his fights in Bellator doing that. So <clears throat> Jake Hager used it in good effect here. But not to say that Wardlow didn't do a very good job in this matchup, because he did. And he did some. Really good wrestling takedowns. Now, of course, um, wrestling does have a place in mixed martial arts because a lot of amateur wrestling is seen in that regard. But obviously, this is not that kind of fight. It was a knowledgeable fight of what both men can do in terms of wrestling and in terms of striking this match. And it was a good, fun opener, to be fair. I enjoyed it. And whilst it was the first time ever matchup, it was well done, to be fair. Will we see another one of these in AEW? I don't know. But I really did enjoy what these two brought to the table. To the cage in this show, in this point, I would say. <laughs> but I, I liked it, and it was a good, fun environment for this kind of um, matchup. And it was the opening matchup, which made a lot of sense. And I enjoyed it, I really did. I thought this was unique, fun, and the right guy did win the bouts, and that was JK. But <clears throat> I can't give anything but a thumbs up for both men for doing a good job in this kind of environment. I don't know if Wardo's ever been in this kind of a bout before. I honestly couldn't say. JK has, so obviously, he had the advantage coming in, and he did. Get the win, but this was an entertaining open, and Wardo held his own. Can't fault it, even though it wasn't um, a proper mixed martial arts fight, it was just a professional wrestling side of a way of doing it, shall we say. But not so that Jake Hager didn't deserve the win because he was very good, he took the experience, he showed it for sure in this bout. But Wardo held his own too, did a very good job. So, definitely thumbs up for both men for this one. So, good, fun stuff. And this match was Darby Allen in a handicap match versus Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Now this stemmed about <clears throat> when Darby Allen and Sting beat Men of the Year, as they're now called, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page at the recent pay per view. Now, <clears throat> of course, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky took that loss with grace, to be fair, to an extent, because they are heels. <laughs> and they said, well, do you, you know, you've got Sting, but can you get it done without Sting? So, of course, Darby Allen wanted to go it alone. He didn't want to do it with anybody but Sting. But, of course, he, he said to Sting, stay home, I've got this. And Darby Allen decided to take on Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky in a handicap match, which was unusual. But <clears throat> Darby Allen is perhaps the most fearless professional wrestler you know, in AEW, if not the world, you know, there is nothing that guy will and has not done so far and will continue to do so because that's the kind of man he is. So he had no problem stepping into the ring with these two in a handicap match. And I'll give credit where it's due. It was a good handicap match. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page did win, but Darby Allen did show why he is that good. And he did everything he possibly could 
to fight off these two men. And at times, he looked like he was going to win. He was really giving it a great matchup. And handicap matches are very difficult to put a finger on when it's this kind of environment, when you've got a wrestler who wants to prove it by himself against a team like these two. It's unusual to see how it's going to go. But this one went very well, to be fair. I liked the work rate from all three men, the cockiness, the attitude of Sky and Paige, because obviously they knew they outnumbered him, you know, two to one. And it was a good, good handicap match. And one of the very few handicap matches I think I've ever seen in AW. Again, I don't know if I've ever seen a handicap match full stop. If I have, I don't remember it. But that being said, um, it was a good showing from all three men and they made this matchup work very well. It held my attention. And even though I kind of guessed Paige and Sky were going to win, and they did with the Ego's Edge. Not to say that Scorpio did not give a good showing, because he did. And um, I enjoyed this, I really did. And I thought this was a good handicap match. So, a very unusual series kind of match up to unusual matches in a row, shall we say. <laughs> I did. But definitely thumbs up to both Scorsese, so all three men, shall we say, for this one. So, good stuff. Enjoy it. And this match was Caesar Benoni versus Orange Cassidy. Now, the wingman who sees Benoni's parts of has asked Orange Cassidy to kind of join their organisation as of late. And it's, it's been a bit of an unusual um, situation because you wouldn't think the wingman would ask someone like Orange Cassidy to join them. But they did. And they're still trying to recruit him. So, of course, this which led to this matchup of Orange Cassidy refusing. He's part of Best Friends. It's Orange Cassidy, and the most, perhaps the most beloved guy in all of AEW, if not the most. We'll say if not one of the most beloved guys in AEW. But this was a fun match, to be fair. I enjoyed this. And the shenanigans from the best men in this match <laughs> was so good. When Orange Cassidy fell to the floor, they were trying to give him like a makeover, shall we say, and with the rubber's back turned off. I thought I loved it. I've never seen anything like that in a wrestling match. I thought it was so entertaining. And very, very, very cool to see. And this was actually a fun match as well. And... I think Orange Cassidy winning was the right call, even though I was half expecting the women to maybe pick up the win here to try and antagonise things a little bit more of Orange Cassidy. No, Orange Cassidy picks up the win, picks up the win, sorry, <coughs> with the Orange Cross punch. And this was, again, a well worth matchup. Lots of outside influence, which you'd expect. The best friends, obviously, were in Orange Cassidy's corner. But these two work together very well. And obviously, a size differential because Cesar Bononi is a massive guy. He really is. Orange Cassidy, not the toys, but perhaps the the king of sloth style, as I still like to call him, did very well here too. And this was a well put together matchup and entertaining. This one was, I'm not going to say a match of night, that's not fair, but this was a good matchup. I enjoyed this one. So definitely thumbs up to both of them for this one. Very, and very cool, different kind of matchup and adding to the kind of variance and what they've been doing because, and obviously, yeah, the, the mixed martial arts fight, the handicap match. And a matchup that involved wrestlers trying to give another wrestler a stylish makeover, shall we say, during the match. So definitely thought that was really unique. So thumbs up to everybody involved in that for sure. So there you go. And this match was Cody Rhodes and Brock Anderson versus QT Marshall and Aaron Solo. Now, this was Brock Anderson's wrestling debut in AEW. I'm not sure if he's ever had matches before. Now, he's the son of legendary in you know fourth horseman member and legend full stop Arn Anderson and you can tell he is Arn Anderson's son because the resemblance is insane it really really is and of course Arn Anderson is you know in a corner of Cody Rose and Brock Anderson Cody Rose obviously the head I'm not sure he's the head trainer at the Nightmare Factory but he is one of the trainers and of course QT Marshall now inside a part of the factory that was worth part of the Nightmare Factory so continuation of the feud in this regard, and I thought this was a very good um, stage for Brock Anderson to step in because obviously Arn Anderson in the corner of Cody Rhodes as he always has been. But this was actually a very good tag match and probably my match of the night to be fair. And I don't say that lightly because there were some very good matches on this card too, but this one I really liked. I thought the way they tried to take advantage of Brock Anderson being the rookie in this regard. Did it work out in any way, shape or form? Brock Anderson was being coached by his partner, Cody Rhodes, and of course by his father. 
well, for very, 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 very just reasons, because obviously he's a guy who's not been in the business very long. But he looked like he belonged in the match, in the ring, sorry, I'll say that. But he's an Anderson, I can't say that really, really shocked me. But the the way they worked this matchup was superb, and QT Marshall gave a spine buster right in front of Arn Anderson was brilliant. I thought, talk about salt in the wounds with his son involved in the match was crazy. But you know what? Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But this matchup was honestly superbly worked from all four men. They really made this work. And Brock Anderson getting the pinfall was uh, to top off what was a very, very, very well worked tag match. And the psychology was fantastic from, from the very, very start. Great tag wrestling, great tag action, and great individual psycho psychology from all four men, to be fair. You know, Brock Anderson not giving up despite the fact he's not been in the business very long. But he went in it and he wanted to give everything he got. And Cody Rhodes always brings it, one of the very, very best in AEW. And QT and Aaron Solo played the antagonist of trying to get inside Brock and his father's head brilliantly. It was so well done. And this is that kind of psychology from the all four men, to be fair, that you just love to see in a wrestling matchup. And sometimes, you know, there, you don't you can do that without a real, shall we say, more focus on tag team wrestling, tag team maneuvers, and just great wrestling. But you got that too. So that was what really made this matchup stand out for me. And I'm going to be my match of night. So I really liked how all four men did this match. So definite thumbs up to all four men. And I think this was a great continuation of the Anderson, sorry, the Factory and the Nightmare Factory feud. I think this was a really good way to build up even more. And it's going to continue on from here. So definitely, definitely really looking forward to that. So great stuff. Next match was Penelope Ford versus Julia Hart. Now, this is Penelope Ford's first match in AEW for a while. I think her last match was in January. I'm not too sure. I think actually might be a bit after that, to be fair. But um, facing someone like Julia Hart, who has, it was a two-time national cheerleading champion, Penelope Ford has her own cheerleading background. So very unusual to see that in a professional wrestling ring. Uh, obviously, Penelope Ford has more experience than Julie Hart by some 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 considerable distance, because Penelope has been wrestling for a few years now. Julie Hart has been wrestling for a very short time, but this was actually a fun back and forth matchup. And you know, the Penelope has kind of left her cheerleading ways behind in terms of her character. Julie Hart hasn't, which I thought that's what Penelope Ford tried to tap into to say, you know, you don't need to do that anymore. But of course. If you're a cheerleader, you've got the natural, nat sorry, natural athleticism. Both of them did, and it showed. And this was actually a fun women's match. And Penelope Ford won with a very unique Indian death lock into a chin hole. And uh, not quite an STO, but the, the Moose Lock, that's it. But not quite a Moose Lock. So very unique and different for Penelope Ford. Never seen her do that before. She picked up the win. But I think that was the right call because obviously... As you all know, Miro has had his problems with Kip Sabian, Penelope Ford's husband in the past. Kip is out with an injury. So it's been interesting to see what's going to happen next because Miro did come out asking, where's Kip, where's Kip? And the Varsity Blondes are in Judy Hart's corner and she's in their corner for matches. So obviously they got involved in a big feud which is going to lead to Brian Pillman Jr. versus Miro for the title, which I'm looking forward to. I really think that match is going to be a good one. But this was a good women's match, to be fair, and one <clears throat> that you probably don't see much of, like a two former cheerleaders with the athleticism, athleticism, sorry, tongue tied myself here again, <laughs> facing each other, which was unusual, but you know what, kind of cool, I like it, so nothing wrong with that first. So, thumbs up, definitely for both ladies for producing a good, entertaining match, although athleticism central, shall we say. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Also, it's the main event, which was Eddie Kingston, Penta El Cerro, Miolo, and, um, sorry, Frankie Kazarian, sorry, my point is, <laughs> versus the Good Brothers and Matt Jackson. Now, this was Matt Jackson's first time in with the Good Brothers ever in AEW by himself. Nick Jackson was not in the match legally. He was involved illegally at the end of the match, which lost 
the matchup for uh, Penta, Frankie and Eddie. And a very unusual trio, shall we say, but Frankie Kazarian is like Penta and he's like Eddie Kingston. He wants a piece of the elite because obviously the elite, so the Young Bucks were responsible for SCU calling a day when they defeated them in a tag team title match a few weeks ago in Dynamite. So Frankie is now calling himself the elite hunter. So that, of course, you can obviously understand what that entails. And he went in there and he went in this matchup all out. But this was also a very good six man tag match. The brutality from all six men was crazy. More so from Eddie, Penta, and Frankie, but obviously for very obvious reasons because they really want to get their hands on the elite. And of course, the good brothers. And I will say it was good to see the good brothers in the main event of uh, AEW. Not the first time they've been involved in the main event because I obviously they're not signed there, but. It was very entertaining stuff. I enjoyed this one a great deal. Um, really good um, wrestling from Penta in this one. I mean, Penta's always been one of my favourites watching AEW because of him and his brother just being a truly unreal tag team, <laughs> to put it lightly. But they showed he showed some great chemistry with all three men in this matchup and of his, his opponents, shall we say. And of course, Eddie being Eddie is always reliable. Frankie arguably one of the most underrated and best all-rounders in AEW have full stop. This was a combination of shenanigans, you know, obviously uh, Don Callis. No, sorry, Don Callis was on commentary, my apologies. Obviously, Brandon Cutler being in the corner of the league trying to get involved. And, of course, he had, you know, all the shenanigans happen that Nick Jackson got involved in the end of the match, which ended up costing Penta, Frankie, and Eddie the match. But this was a crazy... Not chaotic, but crazy, but fun six-man tag team made of it. I really enjoyed this one. And different to say, so kind of unusual to see the combination of the Good Brothers and just Matt Jackson. Same goes every other side, though. But I won't just say Penta and Eddie, because obviously they've got a long friendship, long time, long time friendship. Timmy Franklin is own. Unusual. But you know what? Nothing wrong with that. So I enjoyed them as a trio. I really did. And, you yeah, know, this was a good... Six man tag match, and they worked it very well and topped off what was actually a very good episode of Dynamite. I mean, I've said AEW have been great all year, but this was a very different show for Dynamite in terms of the obviously the cage fight, the um, handicap match, and obviously the two cheerleading, uh, forward cheerleaders facing each other in the match, which has never happened in AEW before either. So, a lot of unique variants in this week's episode, but you know what? I love it. You know, nothing to say, but. Good stuff from everybody involved for this week's Dynamite. A little bit different from the normal episodes, but you know what? Sometimes that's a good thing, and this was definitely a good thing. So, on that positive note, I will end the review here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I'll see everybody next time. Until next time, take care.